A word processor is a computer application which makes creating and formatting a Word document simple and efficient. Types of Word documents commonly created with a word processor include letters, agendas, presentations and memos to name a few. There are a number of word processors available on the market, but in this video we will explore the basic functions of a word processor using Microsoft Word, installed on a Windows machine as our example. To begin with, let's click on Start, then click Microsoft Word. If you don't see the link, make sure All Programs is selected. This will load the default blank document view. Our blinking cursor indicates where words will appear if we begin typing. Let's write a few basic paragraphs, which we will then edit and format for best presentation, remembering that a new paragraph is created each time we press the Enter key. Microsoft Word comes with a range of powerful editing tools, which can be found in the Word toolbar. Notice that the various tools are grouped together by category, such as font or paragraph, and can be accessed by clicking on the appropriate section tab. To begin with, let's apply some basic formatting to our font. To add emphasis to our title, we might try capitalising the line. We can either retype the words we want capitalised while pressing the Shift key, or we can press the Caps Lock key on our keyboard, which will capitalise everything we type. Or as a shortcut, we can highlight our title by left-clicking and dragging over the words we want. Next, we can select the Home tab and click on the small drop-down arrow at the bottom corner of the Font section of Buttons. This will bring up a font window. Under Effects, if we click All Caps, our title will be capitalised. Let's add more emphasis to the title by increasing the size and making the font bold. Let's highlight the words, then still working on the Home tab, click the strong letter B in the font group of buttons. Next, let's make the words bigger by clicking the drop-down arrow next to the font size and selecting a number in the region of 20. Lastly, let's change the colour of our title. Again, highlight the words if they aren't still highlighted, then click the drop-down arrow next to the font colour button. The paragraph group of buttons allows us to work with alignment and spacing in our document. Let's highlight the text we'd like to format. If we click the Line and Paragraph button drop-down, the first list of numbers will let us adjust the spacing between the lines in our document. If we click Line Spacing Options, we can set the size of the paragraph gap for both before and after the paragraph. We can see now that there is a more generous gap between the first and second paragraph. We may want to adjust the alignment of a line. In this case, let's center our title. First we select our title, then we can click the center button, seeing how our title is now perfectly aligned in the middle of the page. We can differentiate or emphasize a line by using the left and right indent buttons. First, let's click anywhere on a line we wish to indent. Then we click either right or left indent. We can also adjust more than one line at a time by clicking and dragging over the lines, highlighting them in blue. Now it's a good time to discuss the undo and redo options. If we ever make a mistake or are unhappy with the formatting we've applied, it's simple to undo our actions. The undo button in the top left corner of the page will undo our last action, while next to it, the Redo button will redo whatever we have just undone. A handy shortcut to remember is Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y. Pressing the Ctrl and Z keys together will undo our mistake, and pressing the Ctrl and Y keys is the same as clicking Redo. Other useful shortcuts and tools to remember are Cut, Copy and Paste. Often we will find ourselves needing to copy and move large amounts of text. If we highlight a paragraph, we can click on the Copy button in the Clipboard section or as a shortcut, press Ctrl and C together. We can then place our cursor where we wish to paste our text. Then either press the Paste button or as a shortcut, pressing Ctrl and V will achieve the same result. The Cut option is similar to Copy. 
the difference being that it removes the text we select storing it on our clipboard to be pasted elsewhere. Control and X is the shortcut to cut. It is a good idea to save our work regularly. If we click on the File tab, we can click Save at the top of the side panel. The first time we save, we will be asked to name our document and select where to save the file. From here on, every so often, we can simply press Ctrl and S to save any new work. Microsoft Word comes with a powerful tool which you can use to check your spelling. When ready, click on the Review tab and then click Spelling and Grammar. The program will automatically identify words it thinks are spelt incorrectly, giving you the choice to ignore the error or change to the alternative suggestion. Click through each of the suggestions until done. Finally, when ready to share our document, we can print from the file menu. Click print from the sidebar. Here we can customise our print options by selecting the number of copies we need, as well as checking to ensure our preferential printer is selected by clicking the drop down under printer. When ready, we simply click the large print button. In this video we've covered some of the very basic tools available to us in a word processor. In the next video, we will explore some of the more advanced features of Microsoft Word.